Today I want to share with you uh, how I make uh, fermented daikon. Daikon is a Japanese radish. Um, this is what they look like here. Sometimes they grow a lot bigger than that. They can grow up to kind of that size. Um, they are in the radish family and they are used a lot in Japanese cuisine. Um, so anyway, let's get on with it. What do we need? I have got here, uh, I've got about two teaspoonfuls of coriander seed, which we're going to grind up. Um, I have about a teaspoonful of cumin seed, or cumin seed, however you want to pronounce it. I've got, I've got about a quarter of a teaspoon of um, kelp, organic kelp powder. Um, I try to add a little bit of seaweed to all of my um, ferments these days, uh, just so that I've got that extra iodine and the ben health beneficial uh, properties of seaweeds. Um, and I've got about four sliced up, fairly large cloves of garlic. Depends on your taste, whether you like garlic and things like that, whether you add these. I've also got two sliced up green chilies. Now these little ones here, I got these from the markets yesterday and apparently they're some kind of a Sri Lankan crossbreed something, but they've got a really nice taste. I've been putting them in my juice because I'm still on my juice feast and that's why I'm making this because I've got about 13 days to go I think on my juice feast so I thought I'd get this ready and that way this will be all nice and fermented and ready to eat when I'm finished. So yeah I've sliced up two of these to add just to add a bit more heat. The daikon itself has a little bit of heat being a radish um, but I just like to add that little bit extra so yeah about four cloves of garlic and two of those little chilies. Um, you'll also need uh, your daikons of course. I've, I'm doing two about this size. This one's the bigger one there was this is part of it, this uh, smaller one, which was probably about that size, I guess, so that's what I'm chopping up today. Uh, you'll need a mortar and pestle, uh, like this heavy thing, or a smaller one, uh, just to grind your seeds up. Some Celtic sea salt. Um, this is the brand that I use. Make sure that it's um, Celtic sea salt. You don't want to use ordinary table salt in this. Uh, ordinary table salt is processed, it has had all of its minerals removed and it is just chloride, uh, sodium chloride. Celtic sea salt has all of its minerals, so it has about 80 or 90 odd minerals in it, magnesium and zinc and all of those wonderful things that we want to get into our body. So make sure you're using that. You can see the difference in the Celtic sea salt compared to other salts. Rock salt is not Celtic sea salt, it also is processed. If you look at the, the processed salts, they are pure white, Celtic sea salt is grey and damp looking and that is because it has all its minerals so that's what you want. Um, you need a jar of some sort or a crock to, to uh, ferment your um, vegetables in. You can't use metal, don't use a metal container, it will uh, pull stuff out of your metal, destroy your ferment and destroy your metal container. Um, so yeah, glass or ceramic, something like that. Um, I just use glass jars, I save my jars from things other things I end up with covers full of them which drives my hub husband nuts and we have to end up throwing some out eventually but yeah glass jars are always a handy thing to keep. Uh, you need something to chop up your daikon. I use a mandolin slicer and I have a little attachment here that has teeth which cuts it into like little julienne type strips like that if you can see there. I've got some already chopped up here if you have a look in the, in the bowl there. Um, be very careful with these, that you don't cut your fingers. Always use the, the bit on the end once you start getting down, but you don't want to get your fingers too close to those blades. I have cut myself in the past. So all we do is we finish chopping up our radish, like so. And, and by the power of magic of video, we're just about finished chopping up these um, bacon radishes, that's the last of the second one. Um, with these last little bits I just take them and I just chop them into little pieces, little julienne slices. You don't need to be too fussy, it doesn't matter too much. I just pop those in there. So now we've got a big bowl of uh, chopped up daikon radish. I'll show you in just a moment. Get 
rid of this off of here. I'll use the knife for that because I don't like getting my fingers too close to these blades. Okay. Pop that over there. Here's the top of that second one. See? So now we've got quite a reasonable amount there. Then my jar there is not going to be big enough probably for this. Um, we might need a second smaller one. So now um, we're going to just grind up these spices. So we've got the one um, heap teaspoon of cumin seeds and two teaspoons full of uh, coriander seed. You could put a little bit more of these in or a bit less. It just depends on your taste, but um, just trial and error to see what you like. I've had a few disasters with these. I've had some fantastic batches as well. Um, I tend to forget to write down what I put in things, so each time tends to, can be a bit of an experiment, and that's exciting. When oh, when I'm grinding things up in here, just uh, pop a little bit of salt in with it. It just adds a little bit more abrasion and uh, helps to grind those seeds up. So coriander seeds flying everywhere. Um, when you add spices to these types of things, not only are you getting the fantastic health properties from the daikon, radish or whatever vegetables you're using, you're also getting the health properties from the spices. Herbs and spices, I always say, are God's little packages of just absolutely amazing stuff. They are so potent and so good for your health. Um, coriander seed um, and cumin seed are both great for your, digestive, uh, for your digestion. They help you to digest your food, they'll help with indigestion and things like that. So when you put the whole thing together, you've got the dake on with fantastic uh, digestive enzymes. It's fermented, so it's going to help with digestion anyway, with the lactobacillus uh, bacteria that are going to help to colonise your digestive system and just make it function better. Um, you've got the digestive properties in the spices. Um, the chilli also, chilli is good for digestion, so you know, you've got anti-cancer properties in the radish, you've got anti-cancer properties in the, gar in the garlic. Garlic's fantastic for blood pressure and all those things as well. Parasites, it's just, when you mix all these things together and you ferment them, you've just got something that's just so good for you. You know, these are, these are foods, uh, and this is a way of making food that used to be used all the time years ago and has been lost through our modern day manufacturing of food where they pasteurize everything and, and heat it and cook it until it's completely dead and then stick it in a can or a bottle um, to make it last on a shelf. This stuff, when you ferment foods, they will last. I mean, they'll last in the, fr in the fridge for uh, months if necessary. Traditionally, sauerkraut was made and it was put in the basement and kept over winter and just eaten throughout the winter because it's just a way of keeping it. The, the salt actually um, stops other bacteria from growing and only the bact lactobacillus bacteria um, grow in that salty uh, brine mixture that this ends up in and um, so it stops it from spoiling and, and going off so fantastic way of preserving food and a fantastic way to eat your vegetables and get the, the absolute best benefits out of them so I'll keep grinding this up otherwise we'll be here all day Okay, so this will probably do. You don't need to be too fussy with it because it's going to be fermented, so everything's kind of softens up and breaks up anyway. Just get a little bit more. Okay, so that's all ground up, and I'm just going to pop that in there with the radish. Just throw that in there, put that over to one side. Um, the kelp powder, I'll just Throw that in there as well. Get that out of the way. Now the salt. In this amount of radish, I'd probably use about two heaped teaspoonfuls of salt, or one and one really big one, and one kind of just a bit heaped. Um, I have had put way too much in in the past, and so I'm a bit careful not to do that now. It ruins it, makes it far too salty. Now what you do is you basically you mix this through. I mean you can use a potato masher or a, even the um, pestle out of the mortar and pestle and pound this to get some of the juice because the, the salt actually um, draws the juices out of the vegetables and um, 
and actually, so you end up with water um, and salty kind of brine sitting underneath. Um, if you leave it to sit for a little while, that'll, that'll help as well. You can leave it to sit and it'll actually start that process for you. The way that I usually do it is, is with my sauerkraut, I just get my hands in there and I just pound it and grind it and squish it and squeeze it um, to get that out um, because I actually quite enjoy doing it. Um, so yeah, so you just pound it away and squeeze that juice out of there. Okay, so it's only a few minutes and that's just about done. Um, try to make sure that your daikons are, are fairly fresh. If they're not, they won't have as much moisture in the same as if you're doing sauerkraut with cabbage or whatever. The, the older the vegetables are, the less moisture they'll have in them. Um, you really want them as fresh as possible. Um, if you can see there, I don't know whether you can see in there or not, there's a, all this liquid in the bottom. This I haven't added that, that has come out of the daikon. Um, it's kind of a grey blacky colour because it's got the kelp and stuff mixed in with it. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much um, squished up enough and has enough fluid out. So then I just add my garlic and chilli. Um, if you wanted to, you can crush the garlic, you don't have to slice it, you can crush it or do whatever you want with it. Um, chop it up smaller, I just like to slice it up because I like to have some slices of garlic in there. Um, same with the chilli, you can, I mean, you can leave it out, you can add more or less, you can do whatever you want with it. Chop it up smaller, make it bigger if you like, bigger pieces if you really like chilli. You want to have those hot tasty bits in there. Um, so yeah, so that's all done. So now a jar. Now one of the great things about doing fermented vegetables is you don't have to sterilise your jars and things like that as long as they're clean. They will do it because the uh, fermentation process is going to kill any other bacteria that are in there. So all we do is we pack this into the jar. Bit of a messy process, but not too hard. Pack it down as you go. Okay. So we'll get it in there. It might all fit in this jar actually. I didn't think it was going to. It's amazing how much smaller it gets once the once you've um, got some of that juice and stuff out of it, the salt's done its work, it actually reduces by quite, quite a lot. So we'll keep packing that in. Okay. Put it all over the place. Probably going to end up a little bit full this one, but that's okay. Pour that in there. The idea is to have the liquid above the vegetables, that way they're not going to go mouldy on the top. If they are sitting out of the liquid, chances are they'll go mouldy. If they do, it's not too big a deal. I mean, you can just take off any mouldy bits that are dry on the top, and if it still looks okay underneath, then by all means um, you can eat that. Um, because anything that's under that liquid is going to, should stay good. That's way probably a bit too full, but that's that's all done. So that's basically it. You should, by rights, uh, best have you know maybe an inch or so gap up the top to allow for the fermentation. Because what happens is, in a couple of days, within a couple of days, that's going to start bubbling and and doing its thing in the jar, and it's going to overflow. I, I, I always put them into a container on the bench. Just let it sit somewhere warm on the bench. Um, and I'll pop the lid on. If it's um, bubbling over too much, I probably don't want it to be sealed because it's going to build up pressure. So I just, I, I usually just release them every day, undo the little, little lid a little bit every day or whatever, just let any, let any pressure out. But yeah, put it in a container, just sit it in a plastic container or a ceramic or glass container um, so that if it overflows, it doesn't go all over your bench. Um, and it will take probably anything between one and three weeks depending on the temperature. Um, I had one over winter time that just didn't work at all I think because it was too cold I'm not sure, too sure why that one didn't work it just didn't really ferment but um, usually uh, the warmer the temperature the faster they do ferment and um, so this this I think this will probably be ready in a couple of weeks time. You can leave it longer to ferment if you wish uh, it just depends on the flavour that you like just taste it and see, um, it's um, not rocket science and um, it just depends on what flavours you like and, and you'll learn that with time as you do it. 
So that is fermented daikon, um, fantastic um, flavours and a fantastic accompaniment, accompaniment with um, any dish. Um, it will help you to digest any foods that you're eating, cooked foods and things like that. A good idea to have fermented foods if you're having cooked meat or animal products um, or cooked foods of any sort because it does help you to digest them uh, more easily. And um, yeah, a great way to get vegetables and herbs and spices into you, potent anti-cancer properties, uh, potent health giving properties um, and just wonderful real food. Okay, so that's it. So that's fermented daikon.